Welcome to day four of the Improper Integrals Notes. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on evaluating proper integrals, particularly in a couple application uh, area volume problems. We're, we're also going to perhaps use the comparison test to help us evaluate these improper integrals. So let's look at example one here. First off, uh, I can identify that this integral is improper because as we approach x equals 27, the denominator of the integrand is going to equal zero, which shows that there is a vertical asymptote at that location. That gives us a location of improper integral. So rewriting this in terms of u, I can do a u substitution that enables me to rewrite the expression in terms of u. So my expression now is negative du over u to the one-third. And because I've written this in terms of u, my boundaries also need to change. So if I plug in my lower boundary of 0, 27 minus 0 is 27. Plug in my upper boundary of 27, 27 minus 27 is 0. And we get our improper integral here. This Improper integral is improper at zero, because zero is what's causing the vertical asymptote, now that we're in terms of u. So if I want to go about evaluating the improper integral, I need to write my limit expression, and we're going to say the limit as b approaches zero from the right-hand side of the integral 27 to b of <coughs> negative u to the negative one-third du. As we continue to evaluate the improper integral, we see this is a power rule for integrals here, so we can write the expression limit as b approaches 0 from the right, and we add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent, giving us negative 3 halves u to the 2 thirds being evaluated from 27 to b. When we go through the process of evaluating this limit expression, limit as b approaches 0 from the right of negative 3 halves b to the 2 thirds, subtract negative 3 halves 27 to the 2 thirds. This is the limit expression that we're going to evaluate to get the value of the improper integral. As we approach 0 from the right, our first expression approaches a value of zero. So all of this cancels out when we're evaluating the limit, and we get these two negatives that combine or cancel each other out. So we have 3 halves times 27 to the 2 thirds. And 27 to the 2 thirds is the cube root of 27, which is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So our expression is equal to 3 halves times 9, or 27 halves. That is the evaluation of this proper integral using substitution, then the limit expression that we need to use for improper integrals, and then our standard procedure for evaluating integrals accounting for the limit. Continuing on to example 1b, we have a Improper integral here, very similar to the previous one, where at the location uh, x equals 1, our denominator is 0, and that's what makes this integral improper, because we have a vertical asymptote at 1. So we can separate this improper integral into two integral expressions. We have the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of 0 to b, 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds dx. And to that we will add the limit as d approaches 1 from the right of d to 3 for 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds dx. We have to split it up as two separate improper integrals because we're improper on the left side of one and improper on the right side of one. 
going through the process of u substitution and finding the antiderivative of 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds, we can find that the antiderivative is 3 times x minus 1 to the 1 third. And this is being evaluated from 0 to b. That's our first antiderivative. Our second antiderivative, it's the same function, so the function is going to be the same when we take the antiderivative, 3 times x minus 1 to the 1 third. This is being evaluated from d to 3, and we need to take the limit as d approaches 1 from the right. So we've now gone through the process of integrating, and now we need to evaluate the limit expression. The limit as b approaches run from the left, 3b minus 1 to the 1 third. If I stick 0 in there, I'll get 3 times negative 1. And then we continue to evaluate from the right-hand side. We plug d in for our lower bound and 3 in for our upper bound. If we plug 3 in for the upper bound, oops, let's put the limit expression in there to be clean. 3 in for the upper bound, we get 3 times the cube root of 2. And then we subtract the lower bound, 3 d minus 1 to the 1 third. Then we go about evaluating each limit expression. If I plug 1 into this limit expression, I'm going to get 3 times 0. So that direct substitution yields the first half is a value of 3. Then we go to the second half. If I plug 1 in from the right for this limit expression, I also get a value of 0. So that would cancel out, and we get 3 plus 3 cube root of 2 as our final improper integral value. In example two, we'll be finding the area of a region in the fourth quadrant. So we've got three curves that defined that region. y equals 2 ln of x, which is a natural log function vertically stretched by 2. y equals 0, which is a horizontal line. And x equals 0, which is a vertical line. And specifically, they're asking for the region in the fourth quadrant which is the region enclosed right here, which we know is improper as we approach zero from the right-hand side because of the vertical asymptote. The integral expression for that area would be the area from zero to one. All log curves intersect at one before being transformed of the top curve minus the bottom curve, so negative two ln of x dx. And if we write this as a improper integral with a limit expression, this would be the limit as b approaches zero from the right-hand side of b to one of negative two ln of x dx. Constants can travel along for the ride, so I'm gonna move that negative two to the front of the limit expression. And we have a limit expression for the natural log being integrated, which is not a standard antiderivative rule, but we can find the antiderivative using integration by parts. And I encourage you to check out videos on integration by parts to see how that's done. Once it's been executed once, some people will commit to memory the antiderivative rule for the expression. With an antiderivative of x ln of x minus x. We need to evaluate this limit expression from b to 1. So plugging uh, the top boundary in, we get the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of 1 ln of 1 minus 1. Subtract, plug the bottom boundary in, b ln of b minus b. Or negative two, limit as b approaches zero from the right of ln of one is zero. So we have zero subtract one. 
e to 1 minus b l to b plus b. That negative follows through there. Doing a little cleanup with our algebra, the negative 2 times the negative 1 is 2. And then the limit as b approaches 0 from the right for just the b is 0. So this becomes 2 subtract the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of b ln of b, which is a non-obvious uh, answer here because if we do direct substitution, we're getting that 0 times negative, infin negative infinity situation. This is a L'Hopital's rule problem. This is a indeterminate limit expression. So using L'Hopital's rule, we have to write it in a form that will allow us to do L'Hopital's rule. So L and a B over 1 over B, so dividing by 1 over B is the same as multiplying by B. And this is a L'Hopital's expression. If we stick 0 into this, we get negative infinity over infinity and we know it is indeterminate. So by applying L'Hopital's rule, the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of the derivative of ln of b is 1 over b. The derivative of 1 over b is negative 1 over b squared. This is 2 subtract the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of b squared over b. The b's cancel. If we stick 0 in there, we get the value of 0. So this is equal to 2. This was a good comprehensive problem because it started off as just an in area problem. An area problem became an improper integral problem, which became an integration by parts problem which then became a L'Hopital's rule problem. So this is a good, thorough, comprehensive problem. Um, I even had to pause a moment to reflect on how to move forward from here to the next step. Continuing on to example three, the area bounded by the graph y equals one over x and the x-axis from negative two to two. So real quick, we sketch the graph one over x, the reciprocal function, something like that. There's a vertical asymptote at zero and we're grabbing the region bounded by the x-axis from negative two to positive two. So we have that region and that region. Because this graph exhibits symmetry, that's a odd function, so it's got symmetry, we can consider this two of these regions. So when we set up the improper integral, we're going to do two of those regions, which is the region from zero to two of one over x dx. We've set up the doubling to account for both of them, and then this is the area that we're trying to grab with the definite integral. As I said, this is improper at x equals zero because we have a vertical asymptote at zero. So when we rewrite this expression as a limit, we have the limit as b approaches 0 from the right-hand side of, of b to 2, 1 over x dx. The antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x. So the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of ln of x evaluated from b to 2. This gives us ln of 2 minus ln of b. And as we approach 0 from the right, ln of b will approach infinity. So, sorry, negative infinity. So we have ln of 2 subtract a divergent improper integral. So this overall is divergent. Alternatively, we could say that the area is unbounded. It's an infinite area. We could have even bypassed the work here and used our awareness of P-series and know that 
improper integrals um, or integrals 1 over x dx because that p value is 1 our exponent is 1 this is going to be divergent on either the zero side or the infinity side so 1 over x is divergent um, at x equals 0 and at x approaching infinity so divergent right there there's the work to show that it's divergent in example 4 we're determining if the integral is convergent or divergent um, and if it's convergent to find the value so it's always good to visualize what's going on here 1 over x squared is a graph that is the reciprocal squared graph and as we sketch it out we get this curve that looks like this and they're asking us to essentially calculate the integral from 0 to infinity. The integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx could be thought of as two separate integrals. The integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx plus the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. And recall that in the case of this, we have a p-series uh, improper integral that is divergent because p equals 2, which is greater than 1. It's going to be divergent as we approach, so as x approaches 0 from the right. So this area of the graph is infinite. To that, we're going to add a convergent p-series, but if you have an infinite number plus a convergent number, or a finite number, infinity plus a finite number, overall makes the graph divergent. So, an age-old argument with your, with your siblings. Infinity, a bigger number is infinity plus one. Well, they're still both infinite, and therefore they're both divergent. Finally, in example five, we're first going to be calculating an area enclosed by a graph, and then we'll be calculating a volume enclosed by a graph rotated around the axis. So the graph they want us to rotate is one over x, and they're saying in the first quadrant, so we're looking at that region from one to infinity. So this region here. As an area expression, we could write the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And this is a p-value of 1, and any time that we have greater than or equal to 1 going out to infinity, we have a divergent improper integral. So the area enclosed is essentially an infinite amount so it is divergent. Now if we go over to rotating, what we have is the same situation. I'm going to draw a little rotates around that line from 1 to infinity. So you can imagine that what we're creating is kind of a, a, a trumpet shape as this gets rotated around the axis. If we rotate that around the axis, we can set up our general go-to equation for washers, pi integral 1 to infinity of big R squared minus little r squared dx. Our big radius is going to be top curve of 1 over x minus the rotation line squared, and our little radius is there is no secondary function, no hole in the washer, if you will, 0 minus 0 squared dx. So writing this out, we have 1 over x squared dx. This is an improper integral where p equals 2. And since 2 is greater than 1, we get an improper integral that converges.
more specifically since this is a p-series integral in proper integral it will converge to a value of 1 over p minus 1 which is 1 over 2 minus 1 accounting for the pi we get a value of converges to pi times 1 a strange instance indeed the amount of paint it would take to fill up all of this space is a infinite divergent amount of paint an infinite amount of paint however if we were to rotate this graph around the axis and create this trumpet shape we would in theory only need pi gallons of paint to fill the trumpet that doesn't break your brain i don't know what would